the third message is that we enter FY23 well provisioned uh, on books that we feel any kind of stress. We have addressed it robustly and importantly dealt with the uh, having to take the uh, you know, sort of strain of having to provide for pension. We've uh, provided that upfront, so we upfronted that as well. The fourth, I think, what is going to distinguish quite materially in FY23 in amongst banks, and particularly banks like us, is people who have a, uh, a liability franchise that can withstand and deliver at times like this. All of us know interest rates are going up. There's going to be a war for deposits. There is going to be, to support the nascent credit pickup, you need a high quality liability franchise. And I've uh, for long maintained that our liability franchise is amongst the most granular, most retail in the market. And I believe uh, we think we have a good, good story going. And this year will probably show the fact that our liability franchise will hold better than many, 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 many other banks and help us grow uh, mid-teens in credit uh, funded by our own you know, non-bulk liability franchise. And the last, which supports the earlier point on deposits, is the fact that we've invested very materially in fintechs. Uh, I would like to believe we are the absolute go-to bank for the fintech partnerships, not just because it's glamorous, but because we have a model that works for both us and the fintech partners. And I'm quite committed and believe that FY23 will see that uh, fan out in terms of both ability to grow and monetize these relationships. So uh, we enter FY23 on the back of uh, good credit quality, a team that is strong, an asset quality, uh, 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 well provisioned, an ability to grow liabilities, and uh, meaningful, uh, you know, thoughts, thoughtful fintech engagements that we are preparing for, and we believe that it will start distinguishing our bank uh, quite substantially. Uh, these were some of the sort of entry opening remarks I wanted to make. The numbers are there for you to see, and we'll be more than happy to answer questions, uh, you know, any clarifications that are required. We had said that we will be on a trajectory to delivering 1.2 to 1.25 percent ROA by the two financial years out, which means in FY23 we are committed to being closer to 1.1 or thereabouts, slightly better. And at this point in time, our line of sight and our trajectory points to the fact that it's quite possible, and we are uh, you know, barring any extraordinary external environment uh, changes, we should be on cost to delivering that. It's also happening that in FY 2022, our capital adequacy went up by about 100 basis points. Uh, we did uh, we did have a, uh, a, a, a new anchor investor who came in, and outside of that, our retained earnings and our overall performance helped us uh, reshape the credit book, helped us raise our capital adequacy to 15.77, if I recall, right? And lastly, but not any less important, has been the, um, this is the second year on a run, we've been uh, chosen as a great place to work. And this is relevant for a bank like us, which is uh, traditionally seen as uh, relatively an old world employer and don't have both talent and, uh, and uh, focus around these aspects. I do believe that we can proudly say that we're both great place to work and we attract good talent. So I'll just pause here and open it up for questions. And I'm sure Rinmi, Ashutosh, Shalini, Harsh, Venkat, Ajit, Babu will be able to answer any questions that anybody may want to ask or clarify. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Gaurav Kocher from Mira Asset. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good evening team. Uh, the first question is is on the OPEX front. Uh, uh, I mean, we took a one-time uh, one time hit of around 145, 150 crore in this quarter. If I remove that, I'm, I'm assuming that this has come in the employee expense line. So if I remove that from the employee expense, uh, it, it shows that the run rate is closer to uh, 480, 490 crore. Is that the way to look at it for the next year, uh, the employee expense run rate of sub-500 crore? Around 500 would be, uh, you know, uh, within the, uh, you should assume 500, 510, that's all, yes. 
Okay, so around about 2,000 ballpark here, yeah. uh, 100 yeah. closure in there. Okay, okay, and, and uh, I remember, I mean, earlier you alluded to, uh, you know, in, in previous calls, uh, that FY23 onwards, some benefit of, you know, some of the employees uh, retiring, older employees retiring, uh, that benefit would come in the form of lower pension liability, and also the yields are moving up. So, uh, is this 500 number net of all that? Yeah, you could say that, yes. Okay, okay, sure, sure, got it. Uh, also, uh, uh, another point on the uh, balance sheet front, I mean, if I look at the borrowings, they were up around 7,000 crores sequentially. Uh, I mean, our LCR is uh, probably best in class. Uh, we have a very high LCR. Uh, I'm assuming the SLR component is also about the regulatory limits. Uh, then why exactly was there a need uh, to borrow? Is it is this some sort of NHB borrowing or lower cost borrowing that we did in the in the quarter end? Yes, uh, there was an opportunity to borrow three of money from Nabad, and that's what we okay. did. Okay, 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 sure. Then that you know, which in hindsight turns out to be a good choice in the context of the rising rate, this yes. is fixed, and so it turned out well for us. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, and just uh, that brings me to the question on growth. I mean, to deploy that uh, uh, that excess borrowing or excess liquidity, uh, what kind of growth are you uh, are we looking at for fiscal year 23? Uh, given that large banks are already growing 15% uh, plus, uh, any sort of uh, growth outlook that you'd like to talk about? May May I step in? Go ahead, Ashish. Basically, if you see our CD issuance, CDs we allowed to mature and all. Number one, it brought. Uh, you know, long, longevity as far as the resources are concerned. It is uh, refinance and therefore exemption is available, CRR, SLR exemption is available. Uh, in retrospect, when we see CRR has gone up by 50 basis point, uh, it looks like, you know, I, that was a good call. Uh, made in January uh, 2022. So I think uh, to answer your question, part of it was, uh, you know, replacement of CDs. Sure, sure. Uh, From a credit growth point of view, we believe uh, this year uh, anything north of 15 is what we should be targeting. Uh, we are uh, not, you know, internally we have higher aspirations, but I think, yes, 15 plus is something we are pushing for. And we believe it's very possible. Here and the year went by, uh, we were at about 10%. We uh, did about uh, close to 1.5% of uh, 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 securitization. So to that extent, we reduced our credit book by about 150, 1,500 crores. Uh, so we did grow close to 12% last uh, financial year. We believe this year it should be well north of 50. Okay, okay, sure. And on the uh, repo rate hike, and uh, given that our SAR is also linked to repo rate, uh, will the SAR rate go up or the spread will be adjusted accordingly? Uh, spread will be adjusted, uh, large part. We've already increased SAR by 15 basis points against a 40 percent, 40 basis point increase in, and we are yet, even after that, the lowest star in the country, and growing at 18, 18, 19 percent. Sure, sure. Operate request has been initiated. If you'd like to cancel this request, please press star zero again. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Maru Kadajania from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Hi. I had a couple of, hi. Uh, so I had a couple of questions. Firstly, that we talked about between credit growth. This time round, it was 10%. So what gives you the confidence? Will it be inflation or market share gains? Or how do we look about? Uh, how do we look at it? It is a combination, Maruk. Uh, there are all businesses that are positioned for growth. Uh, last year, uh, because we went slow on gold loan for the first nine months, slow, we didn't go slow, the market also slowed. We saw low attraction. It picked up quite meaningfully in Q4, and I see that continuing in FY23. The previous year, we had grown 70%, so this year it should be well north of 20-25%. Uh, almost every business line has both potential opportunity and risk appetite to grow north of 15 there are some very nascent businesses like credit cards and uh, commercial vehicles, which may grow at an astronomical, maybe even hundreds of percent. But on balance, we believe that the 130 odd thousand crores of credit book should grow north of 15 percent across the spectrum. Uh, there may be only one business uh, where we may see uh, lower than mid-teens, uh, depending on the size and ticket and competition. We may 
choose to dial up, dial down on the corporate credit depending on the opportunities in the market. But otherwise, granular organic businesses all see huge potential to grow. So a lot of banks, including CSUs, are complaining about very aggressive competition in well-rated SMEs and of course in well-rated corporates. So what are your thoughts there? Do you think uh, with such picking competition, is it possible to grow in these segments? Or the aggressive guys are not in the segment you operate in? Well, I think uh, you know, the good segments are always fully flooded with good players, right? It's never going to be vacant for somebody else to steal. But I think some uh, uh, the current interest rate environment and typically the rush to grow credit that a few banks were you know, sort of gung-ho about, uh, we do see, and I am quite sure you will see that behavioral change in a year like this. And that's why I said very early in the call that deposit franchise banks will grow better. Those who can great, uh, garner good, low-quality granular deposits. Uh, we believe that we have that tool in our hand, and we've demonstrated that for many years, and I believe that will help us grow. And yet, despite everything, growing at 15 odd percent uh, in this environment looks very possible. Uh, I, I do have to add your point of uh, you know a few banks cornering uh, because of their you know sort of overall strength is indeed true, but I do think sanity in pricing is coming now. Okay, sir, that's helpful. So my last question is, if you could give the breakdown of loans uh, by rate, so how much is NCLR, repo, and then fixed and other variables? Very broadly, our repo book is about 45%. Uh, Venkat, am I right? Yeah, Sam, uh, the external benchmark is 46. The uh, MCLR is 18 and uh, fixed is 27. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nitin Agarwal from Motila Loswal Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Congrats on a steady quarter. Uh, two questions. Uh, one is on margins. Like, uh, we have seen an 11 basis point decline this quarter. So, any color on this? And uh, how do you see this faring over FI23? Um... Nitin, I request you to not look at a quarter, look at the longer period. 320 was the number we looked at, and we landed at 320. FY23, we believe that should shoot up by at least another 7 8 basis points. We think we'll blended FY23 will be closer to 325 plus. Okay. And uh, secondly, now that we have already absorbed the uh, family pension cost this quarter, so how do you see the cost income ratio now? We should normalize back to the early 50s, and as I mentioned in earlier calls in prior period, we are pushing very hard to get it to below sub-50, closer to 48, but I think we need one extra financial year for that. Sure, sir. Thanks so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rinish Goa from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Uh, uh, congrats on a great set of uh, numbers. Uh, so again, just uh, how might be repeating in nature, but uh, on the margin front, uh, you know, so despite our uh, uh, high lending books uh, growing faster, uh, let's say gold or a CVC of 40%, uh, those I, I understand that base is very low, but incrementally, if the growth in these segments are higher, uh, why should margin uh, fall in, uh, you know, Q4, I mean, sequentially? Is there any anything uh, which we are missing or any one-offs there? Uh, not missing anything, Ranish, if you see our slippages in Q4, uh, there was a little exaggerated on the agri side, and that typically in an agri portfolio, you will see a bunching up of interest, and when there's a slippage, it tends to eat up a larger share of the revenue reversal. So that extent, got that it. would have taken away four or five basis points. Got it, got it. Okay, uh, that's very helpful. And sir, just, uh, uh, you know, on your uh, opening remarks, uh, you have said that the uh, fintech partnerships have, uh, uh, to some extent, been uh, matured now. And uh, we'll see the uh, the uh, PNL benefits uh, start flowing in, uh, uh, you know, from FI23 onwards. Uh, so any any ballpark numbers uh, you have in mind, maybe it will flow through the other income or NII. I mean, where it should uh, reflect in PNL? You no, know, it will see the liability growth and asset growth both. Uh, there is a you know dependency on this as a distribution, right? We've seen 
are uh, Epify, Jupiter, uh, and potentially a few more that are partners. Uh, that they are they are largely a liability origination uh, relationship. So we think about 25% of our incremental deposit growth will come from these partnerships, uh, incrementally. Uh, likewise, on the lending side, between 40 and 50% of the incremental lending in some products will come through these through these partnerships. These therefore will stack up for our growth in credit, growth in liabilities. Got it. And uh, I'm sure uh, any any. Uh cost benefit analysis we have done let's say uh, whatever incremental business uh, either on the liability side or on the asset side we get uh, is we are getting at uh, a higher than 50 percent cost income or lower than 50 percent cost income um, the, re the the revenue sharing and the cost model with the with the partners as i mentioned in the previous call and now is getting sharper is uh, a fair amount of it is variable it's linked to the volume that is generated and it's not a fixed cost in fact, most 95% of relationship is variable. One or two, there's some fixed element. And importantly, um, for FY23, for the incremental business, it will come at roughly at about 60% cost income ratio, trending towards 45% in the following financial year. Okay. And FY22, I'm assuming it will get 65. Pardon me? Uh, in FY22, the same will be more than 60-65 cost to income. FY22? Yeah, current. Yeah, roughly you could say, but FY22, both uh, uh, the pickup for revenue was latter part of this year. So on the incremental, it was about 65, but on the full year basis, it was closer to 70. Got it, got it, got it, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Very helpful, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kaushik Padar from KB Capital Markets. Please go ahead. Some with uh, whatever HDFC and HDFC bank mergers uh, being there, I mean, it's quite clear that uh, banks need to get bigger to take care of the uh, economy of scale. So uh, is the federal bank, uh, that is its board of director, thinking in those terms? Uh, nothing at this point in time. Neither do we have opportunity to buy, nor has anybody approached us to be bought. So at this juncture, uh, it's heavily organic with uh, opportunities to look at integrating microfinance portfolios or any higher margin portfolio stroke companies for which we have a marching order to go and find. Well, unfortunately, we haven't found any of size or scale or if they are very good, then it's not an affordable price. Mm. But outside of that, nothing Kaushik, we don't have any uh, at this point in time uh, dialogue with anybody one way or the other. Okay, okay. And uh, basically, you're talking of uh, purchase of financial asset, I mean, in the sense of some... Uh, asset, uh, or if a, if, a, if, a, if, a, if a, you know, sort of a well-run microfinance setup is available, we will be happy to consider a transaction, but I have to add quickly that nothing is in the cards. Okay, okay. And this cost, in, cost I just wanted to confirm, cost-to-income ratio for this year, you are, you, are, uh, you are putting it at 50%? In FY23, yes, we look yeah. at 50 51%. 50 51%. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Manish Dariwala from Fiducia Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, very good afternoon. Hi. Uh, uh, now, uh, see, my whole uh, question is uh, surrounding uh, the question that's been asked about the growth. Uh, you know, like this particular quarter, uh, our yield reduced and the cost increased. And uh, uh, you know, this quarter, the uh, the yield was also uh, uh, was also quite uh, uh, at the lower end, uh, so about just 3.16, and you've seen that above we were at 3.2. So basically, you see, the environment is going to be really challenging. And uh, now, you know, already the provisions are down to 75 crores. So I I don't know whether they can come even further down. So where is it that we're going to get the PAT from? I think, uh, uh, you know, I did mention a little while earlier, our NIM expansion to 325, 327 is something that by the business mix change uh, and uh, the prevailing rate environment looks very possible and it will happen. Uh, the cost this quarter was a little exaggerated because of the one-off event. So we do believe that there will be a positive job as in the revenue will outstrip the cost growth and credit quality will continue to hold as well as it does. So that's how we are expecting a 10 basis point improvement in our margin expansion, ROA expansion. 
Yeah, uh, so see, uh, see, uh, you know, we are we are a very very solid platform in terms of our uh, asset book, our the, the quality of our asset book, and uh, you know, uh, uh, we don't you think that we should be kind of using that to step up on our uh, growth uh, aspirations? I didn't mention we will grow very handsomely, I mean, but as a conventional. Fifteen percent, fifteen percent is something uh, that like organizing. You know, no, I respect your observation, but. Uh, uh, you know, there have been stories of people doing 30-40% growth and having then going to jail. We have no such aspirations. I am also acutely aware there are some banks at the scale of an SBFC growing at 20%, but we will be honest and real about where we can do business and how we should do business. So you will not hear Federal Bank trying to talk itself into a position which then looks uh, ugly a few years later. Will we seek out 20%? Absolutely, yes, we will. We will. I mean, we are not any less ambitious about growth. But I think we, be, we, are, we have to be quite honest about the way we do business. If you heard us for partner, tracked us for as long as I've been, we've never made false commitments. We don't intend to also. I mean, that, that's a good sign. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. Uh, and also, see, uh, we've been like, you know, really kind of uh, developing our fintech side of our uh, book. Uh, so far, uh, the costs actually have gone up, despite the fact that, you know, our uh, branch expansion has not happened. Uh, we basically say that, you know, a lot of our business is going to come from the fintech relationships. Uh, so, uh, I mean, uh, so this year, FI23, you think is going to be the year, the year of inflection where the, the money is going to flow in, the monetization is going to happen? Yeah, and I did mention uh, just a few minutes ago that we will see a meaningful part of our incremental growth coming through these partnerships and it's uh, trending towards the 60% cost income and the following year towards the 45% cost income or even better. Uh, if you know, we, we look at this uh, the following way, uh, for about five years plus we've added 20 branches but we've doubled the bank in uh, almost every dimension and we are now these branches, in fact I'm very happy to report as, at this point in time, we just reported to our board today, we have only one branch that is non-profitable, and that too only because it's less than two and a half years old. So we have every branch in the bank at good efficiency and productive and going ahead. So we have told ourselves two things. One is uh, we will dial up our fintech partnerships, which is typically if you open a branch, it takes about 18 months or so to break even. Our fintech partnerships will break even even faster. So uh, when we grow 25% in incremental deposits, it's almost like adding 300 branches at one. Second is, in addition, uh, for a distribution, our strategy was branch light distribution heavy. We have flipped it around to light branch heavy distribution, which means we will start adding branches maximum about 5% of our network will in increase every year. And that again will start giving us distribution. So both counts we are doing work this year and beyond. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you for this detailed uh, reply. We really look forward to you know, uh, increased numbers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sagar Shah from Alpha Line Wealth Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, sir. Hi. We have, uh, hi. So, actually, I just had uh, one question, actually. So, basically, based on the past uh, performance of your agri-banking portfolio, your uh, NPAs uh, seem to be highest in that front, actually. And in spite of that, in this quarter, uh, your agri portfolio, you have grown by 20%. So uh, do you feel that going ahead, this portfolio would uh, see some improved asset quality or uh, we will see the same uh, growth rate uh, going ahead also? This agri you must remind, uh, remind, uh, remind ourselves it has got gold on it. Huh? So when it sees 20% growth, it includes agri gold on also. Uh, okay. And so, and the, Point about agri portfolio facing higher losses is uh, new to me. Uh, maybe I'm not fully informed. I didn't realize it that way. In this quarter, there was a one-off uh, transaction, one-off uh, higher than normal. This quarter was 140 odd crores. Normally, it's never been that high. It includes agri, and in the past, it used to be agri and SME. So, in a reporting sense, if you look back in time, it was agri and SME integrated. But now oh. we partitioned that. So. If you look at it, I don't recall ever agri being a big problem, except for this quarter where we took a larger hit of 89 crores. One if I may add, if I may add, yeah. this is because of, you know, I think basically you have special dispensation for agri. Uh, you have uh, two crop 
sort of you know permissibility wherein you know if in one after one crop season if it is not paid the account is not classified npa uh, for another crop season or so i mean these are some peculiarities with agri loans therefore there is a after effect of covid which got mm-hmm. materialized here uh, with delay in other segments it happened you know then and there so so you expect this uh, so you expect this portfolio to do well in fy23 also yes, right yes in fy23 we will not have that legacy um, uh, covid legacy you know uh, affecting the agri portfolio also so there is a, this is something you know i mean which is peculiar to uh, you know agriculture and therefore even interest reversal because you are uh, maintaining that that account as standard for say two crop seasons so the accumulated accrued interest also needs to be uh, you know i mean uh, realized interest also needs to be reversed and that has impacted the nii also somebody had asked this question about nim so partly this nim contraction uh, by three four basis points is an outcome of that uh, you know agri uh, slippages or so i hope uh, that clarifies yeah certainly and my second last question was uh, related to your business banking and uh, commercial banking portfolio so basically uh, your commercial banking portfolio uh, i think so you have been growing at almost uh, 8% in the last 5 years 8% cagr so uh as you said in your last comments uh, on an average you will be growing around 15% on almost all the segments so are you confident in spite of such heavy competition in the business banking and the commercial banking uh, uh, segments actually throughout the banking system so are you still confident of delivering 15% growth in both the segments mm, i think uh, we are well positioned chief uh, in the q4 these are two businesses that grew i think for the quarter 4% yeah in the most intense competition period yeah absolutely we remain confident on that okay sure thank you sir thank you the next question is from the line of krishnan asv from hdfc securities please go ahead um yeah so just uh, one very quick query around deposit side okay. um this was more to do with the fact that you mentioned about the fact that it, uh, the branches um uh, except for one have kind of broken even i was looking at more at the productivity of these of the branches yes. um uh, have you seen a marked improvement in the potential in the, the potential in productivity of the federal bank you know your branches compared to peers and what are you doing to build that potential I think uh, firstly for quite a while now and each passing year it gets better the sharp focus on products that we want our branches to be doing and branches uh, how much of their time is spent on sales service and operations so we have carved that out quite nicely the reward mechanism for branches are driven by uh, what their job objectives are in terms of productivity uh, you may have noticed our free income ex treasury has grown 25% y on y 10% sequentially largely la- free income on wealth management and life insurance are branch led and has done a remarkable job so productivity on business banking gold uh, collections where they need to step in and uh, free income products in addition to casa growth is their job and on all counts there's very very meaningful progress and each year they are being triggered to perform even better their score cards are sharply focused on this absolutely good yeah so you me chichi uh, uh listen guys somebody need to mute yourself go ahead krishna anything else uh yeah the other bit was around just i mean the growth environment itself generally uh, we have remained fairly conservative even when you know uh, when 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 other peers are able to sequentially grow faster you have been very picky because you are quite selective I just wanted to understand do you see uh from from say a pricing in perspective any competitive intensity easing in any of the key segments that you are definitely you are definitely looking to grow in <laughs> i don't see it easing but i think uh, uh, uh there is some sanity coming in in this uh, very aggressive pricing that was happening in q3 q4 of last financial year uh, of course april is usually a bad month to make any determination because there's a slowdown of varying nature but given trends 
conversations and the general uh, interest rate environment, we believe that some pricing power will come back to lenders. And within the same risk appetite framework that we have, we believe our growth growth numbers that we spoke about, 15% plus, is very possible. Without busting our boundary conditions on lending. Right. Just one last query. I mean, you built a fairly um, granular book on the asset side of the balance sheet as well. It's very carefully crafted for the last few years. I just wanted to understand what kind of wallet share, um, I mean, your assessment of where you are on wallet share and where can Federal Bank potentially take this over the next maybe two, three years. Did you mean product per customer? Is that what your question is? Uh, not necessarily on just the individual side, but even on the commercial banking, business banking side, the SMEs that are typically where you can still exercise some element of, say, the pricing power. Um, As a thumb rule, I want to say that good customers, irrespective of which segment they believe, are able to command pricing. Right? Then it comes to the relationship potential and our frontline guys' uh, ability to work with them and get more business. Uh, as we get more RM and outward client focus, as in we go to the client as opposed to client comes to us, we are seeing that capability drill deeper and get a larger share of the wallet. In small business, business banking, commercial banking, I think our share of business is increasing with every passing. I mean, Kapil, Rati, Shalini, Harsh are on the call. They may also add, but that's increasing. On the corporate where, you know, it's only a big ticket lending, that's a fight. But even there, we've seen very sharp growth in fee income this year and driven by these initiatives. But I think there's work to do on that count. Just to add, Harsh here, on the commercial banking, business banking side, we are typically in most cases sole bankers or dominant banker and other ancillary businesses follow suit. In the mid-corporate segment, the large corporate, obviously, we are gaining share. Uh, uh, just to give an indication, our trade volumes, our cash management volumes, and the fee growth have been significantly higher than our asset growth, obviously indicating gaining market share over there as well. This is self wallet share. Is helpful. Yeah, sure. Many thanks, sir. Many thanks. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kashyap Javeri from NK Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Um, thank you so much, sir, for this opportunity and congratulations for a uh, good set of numbers in the time. Uh, just two questions from my side. One, if I look at fees, uh, you know, there is this, uh, you know, general conditions which have grown almost. Uh, you know, 50 percent y and y from about 45 crores to 70 crores. Uh, you know, last four quarters, the mandate has been about 45 crores. So, you know, what has J1 that number and which seemingly is the primary driver uh, besides charge of, you know, 25 percent growth in fees. And second question is on, on CASA. Now, if I look at the last three quarters, uh, you know, the, the, the star number is now pretty much at about 51 to about 54,000 crores. Uh, and car number is also pretty much stagnant at about 11, 12,000 crores. So, uh, you know, uh, any 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 color on the client acquisition on both the sides, uh, both car and car, uh, you know, if you can offer. Because what I understand is that with the, you know, the fintech uh, partnership that we had, uh, the number of client acquisition has gone up substantially, but, uh, you know, that's not pretty much uh, probably reflecting in the overall float available. So these are the two questions. Uh, I think on the SAR, uh, we can't expect the fintech to give us in the first period. In fact, at this point in time, point <coughs> incremental growth, uh, fintech, uh, you know, business origination in SAR would be like, you know, uh, less than 5%, which is what we said. It will go up to 25% in FY23 of the incremental balances that get built out. And because the profile of these customers come in and they are more transaction and they start building over a period of time, I don't believe that they will all be uh, coming with large balances up front because the nature and profile of that base is very different. Right? And that will continue, but it's giving us access to a new generation of clients which we would not have either to bank, and therefore they will need to cross sell a bunch of products kicks in, and that's something that we worked on. That's why I said 25% uh, of our deposit growth incremental and 50, around 50% 50 of our incremental credit growth for some products will come through this segment. Sorry, I missed the earlier part of the question, if you want to remind me. Uh, uh, so, second question was on fees. So, 
uh, you know the the, the uh, uh, banking commission and exchanges run rate was about 45 crores a quarter and suddenly this quarter it's almost about 70 crores so i think the growth on uh, uh, our fee income products like life insurance mutual funds have all picked up at, you know doing extremely well and that's all branch led and i think when krishnan asked i didn't answer that in terms of these products are branch distribution led which is doing very well penetration and existing client base is increasing shalini you want to come in on that and give your uh, insights on that shalini yeah um thanks sham so i think there are a couple of drivers for driving up the fee income um taking off from where sham left one is on the card side while credit cards is still a very small percentage of the portfolio on debit cards we've been kind of very good from a spend perspective and um, you know we rank among the private sector banks so we trust in terms of monthly spend that has its own benefit in terms of interchange fee so that's one part of the fee income the other part of the fee income that is um, growing at a very uh, steady pace is um, the entire suite of products that we offer under para banking which is life insurance non life insurance health insurance uh, wealth management and uh, products like you know depository demat um, uh, sovereign gold bonds etc that grown 10% q on q 25% year on year so combination of um, these kind of factors along with a uh, normal you know debit uh, the uh, atm fees that we get etc has helped us to grow our fee income um uh, very much uh, driven by customer behavior very much driven by the use of analytics to cross sell products to the customer and very much driven by branch productivity sure and one last question uh, would you be able to disclose uh, monthly client acquisition on the liability side roughly between our organic plus the two partners we are doing closer to 17 to 18000 new customers okay sure thank you so much welcome thank you the next question is from the line of shalini vasanta from dsv mutual fund please go ahead hi good evening this is vivek ramakrishnan uh my question was on the deposit side uh this year seems to be the year where there will be a bit of a scramble for deposits and uh, since you are using fintech and everybody else is also going to be using similar uh, uh, fintech what causes the stickiness in your deposit base and how confident are you that you can grow it uh, in the scramble for deposits i'll also ask a second question so that we, i can uh, do it sequentially I, in terms of we have a nbfc that is doing a small finance business and it's doing quite well uh, so how important is fed fina to your overall uh, targets of roe and growth aspirations thank you fed fina every number of that other than the consolidated number is an independent entity chief uh, we have none of that including except for some retail distribution they do for home loans other than that they are an entirely independent entity run by their board in this the consolidated number is what you see in our numbers but that's a very marginal number in, in the scheme of things for us as of now but they're doing well i'm happy they're doing well and they should do well for the first part of your question stickiness i think for a long long period but that has been the strength of our bank i mean the remittance business that comes in uh, middle east kerala middle east non kerala non kerala non middle east all of that are tracking well domestic franchise across the country our non kerala deposit growth is higher than our deposit growth in kerala driven by a a lower base b a higher presence and productivity third as we step up and see more fintech engagement and this uh, client base starts maturing we believe there will be an incremental opportunity but that is to be yet proven and tested why would we grow and why would customers stick with us with some confidence i can tell you if you are a federal bank customer rarely do you leave us our nps and this is not by my measure nps scores as measured by nielsen for the industry we rank amongst the top 2 3 nps scores now for common understanding net promoter score is the best measure of customer uh, customer uh, uh, referencing us or promoting our case and sticking with us uh, thank you and uh, all the best you thank you the next question is from the line of mahesh mb from kotak securities please go ahead okay hi uh, good evening um, so a couple of questions one is uh, on this uh, on on slide 23 on the retail book um, uh, sham this this growth that you saw in housing seems to be very very weak um, 
it's down on a qoq basis any thing uh, uh, mahesh i think there is that we have got the numbers slightly wrong on that slide we will update that slide and we'll uh, probably update the presentation ah okay okay perfect um on uh, the second question you had kind of indicated this uh, breakup between mclr repo um that number adds to 90 uh, not 100 so you said 45 repo 18 mclr 27 fixed uh, the rest of them are like uh, staff loans and uh, fx and a few other small small 1% 2% so i gave you the bigger one okay okay perfect okay perfect and uh, one last question is that uh, on the pension related cost how much was it for the full year that you had provided one, out here 185 crores on the family pension no no uh, if i include the overall the entire provisions that you made if uh, i look at uh, it would be north of 350 400 crores a comparable number this this would be 500 crores last year if you just kind of look at the annual report and 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 kind of compare it with the number that you have given let me not or, try to guess that where uh, so venkat can or you can give need to one. check that out previous year around 440 to 450 mahesh that is last year or this year last year and this year the number is 350 sir so this year if you add the family pension will be higher Pension alone is 185. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I'll have, have to look into what is it currently. Uh, I haven't checked that. Okay, perfect. Okay, perfect. Um, thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rishab Indrakar from Guardian Capital. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, good evening uh, to the management. Uh, I just had a couple of questions. First, uh, uh, could you take me through uh, w- what the uh, uh, reason for decline in uh, treasury uh, profitability ashish you want to come in yeah so i think basically when interest rates start moving up uh, you do not have the opportunity to really uh, make you know profits on bonds yeah through shorting uh, some part of it has been compensated and through some you know forex volatility was there but that that trading gain cannot substitute the the investment uh, related you know opportunities uh, you know profit on sale of invest um, you know which is classified under profit on sale of investments so i think when you see uh, yields going up the risk is on the other side that you are required to provide for it rather than you know uh, earning uh, profits there so we had been maintaining very low um a pvbp a very low modified duration in our um, hft and afs portfolio as a result of that the hit is minimal uh, but at the same time the opportunity to uh, you know make profit reduces that much but if you see for the year as a whole first quarter has been very very good so when you compare year versus year i think you would find uh, this year to be quite okay i mean the year that is one part has been quite okay on that if my 23 may have challenge Okay, so any uh, uh, guidance on what what sort of profitability we are looking at in treasury business next year? So on the forex side, there would be a you know normal growth of fifteen twenty percent, but on uh, the the um, investment side and all, uh, there are some opportunities, but that would depend on what call we take, depending upon the uh, the then prevailing scenarios and all investments in right. some of those you know strategic investments and all. so that's something you know which uh, we would decide in the fourth quarter uh, overall you know i think uh, uh, you know uh, the 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 uh, uh, profit on sale of investment has not been as such you know budgeted at the same level that which it was the, uh, the actual that come for fy22 but that would be compensated through the core growth um, of core fee income growth which has trended very well in uh, third and fourth quarters of the previous year fy22 So in FY23 we can take it forward to uh, you know compensate and that that's going to be more sustaining. Got it. Okay. Uh, and uh, the second one being, uh, uh, do we have a breakup of uh, you know the fixed rate uh, uh, in terms of loan book? Do we have a breakup of fixed rate and uh, floating rate loan? That's what we got. Yes, we have given. You know, when that you can repeat that. I think it's uh, fixed rate is 27 percent. Yeah. 
27-18 is MCLR and uh, external benchmark is 46-47%. Rift is, you know, advances against uh, uh, specified securities, NSCs, uh, shares, uh, your bank's own deposits and all that. Which, foreign uh, currency also, Ashtosha. Huh? Foreign currency also, loans. Foreign currency, base rate, a few small, small, 1%, 1.5% like that. Yes. Got it. And uh, earlier during the call, it was mentioned that uh, from FY23, we would start monetizing the fintech relationships. Uh, do we have a, uh, I mean, uh, what is the model that we are using for monetizing these? Uh, no, no, I think when I said monetizing, it means that the investments may start fetching revenues. And I said this year, the broadly the cost income should be closer to 60%. Oh, so okay. Every rupee okay. we spend, we expect at least 60 paisa of revenues or more is what we're pushing for. Okay, perfect. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to the participants, please limit your questions to two questions per participant. For any follow-up, may we request you to rejoin the queue. The next uh, question. Just, uh, my apologies. For every 60, one rupee we spend, we earn more, not 60 paisa. We earn more than that. So 1.5 1. 1. or whatever, 1.5. Sorry, apologies. Yeah, go ahead, please. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Franklin M. from Equitis uh, Wealth Advisory. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks for taking my question. So, just on the uh, you know deposit uh, trajectory, last uh, you know two three quarters we have seen a slowing uh, trajectory in the overall deposits, and uh, we are likely to grow our advances by fifteen percent plus in the next year, which means that, you know, our deposit base also needs to start uh, picking up. So one is like, what is the reason why the trajectory has slowed and what, uh, how is this trajectory likely to pick up? So I think uh, this question had come earlier, you know, I think um, part of the deposit is your certificate of deposits and all those. So we have reduced our uh, so-called bulk and wholesale uh, segment. In fact, part of it has been substituted by the refinancers uh, from the, the, the refinancing, um, uh, you know, in, uh, institutions like NABAD and all. But that doesn't come under deposit, that comes under borrowings. Though it is longer term, uh, I mean, very competitively priced and all that. So uh, the thing is, you know, I think you may see a reduction in total deposits or rather slower growth in total deposits, but if you remove this, um, you know, uh, conscious uh, substitution and all, uh, the deposit growth is matching the advances growth, loans growth. Retail deposit growth is in double digit. Okay. And uh, on the NIM uh, trajectory, you said that, uh, you know, around 3.25 is uh, where you are looking uh, to, uh, you know, man uh, maintain the NIMs for the next year. But is there scope for further improvement, like, uh, you know, the year after that? Or is, is this 3.25 likely to be more of a sustainable number? So I think, uh, I mean, the effort of the bank as the mix of the business changes, and in a rising rate environment, certainly to go higher than the 3.25, closer to 3.30 or beyond. But I think these are best uh, delivered and then spoken of the next milestone. Yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah, thank you. The next question is from the line of Gaurav Jani from Prabhudas Leeladhar. Please go ahead. Thanks uh, for taking my question. Uh, firstly, uh, uh, you know, question to uh, Sham sir. Uh, uh, sir, so on, on the, you know, CASA ratio, we're at about KC 37. Uh, in the coming year, as we're glaring at a, uh, you know, higher interest rate environments, uh, generally for us and for the system, I mean, how do then, you know, customers behave? So, you know, could we retain uh, these customers or uh, should we logically see a reduction in the CASA ratio? No, we are looking at, uh, see, in CASA, we have to look at two things uh, when you look at a ratio of both the numerator and the denominator. Uh, what we are aspiring and working on is to get the CASA growing at the north of 17, 18% growth rate. And uh, term is a function of both pricing and demand that we want. So CASA ratio can swing, but preferably we want to push it by another 100 basis points. In the last two financial years, we moved up 313 basis points in CASA. We believe that we should get it closer to 39, uh, but we are working on that over a period of time it will happen. But more than the ratio, please focus on the net blended cost of fund and costs are growing. Having said that, the ratio will improve uh, because that's also a focus area of the bank.
FD proping those are from an alien standpoint what proportion of uh, the liabilities would mature uh, uh, within one year so i think on the term deposit side uh, nearly uh, 60 to 65% of term deposits have the original maturity of one year so so uh, to nearly two thirds nearly two thirds of the term deposits have the original maturity of one year so remaining maturity could be uh, you know few days to uh, you know uh, 12 months okay 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 good thanks that's good thank you the next question is from the line of anandama from mk global please go ahead uh yeah thank you sir for the opportunity uh, sir the housing book and the pl book both have declined on a quarter and quarter basis is there any reclassification which has happened in our uh, mention there is an error in reporting there chief sorry that needs to be corrected yeah but on the personal loan side uh, i think there uh, last quarter also we had uh, said personal that basically loan has declined. personal loan has declined uh, rate yeah. of growth has slowed down because we did not grow that business aggressively in fy22 Uh, for uh, for the purpose that of credit uh, quality and comfort that we get, we see that happening going into FY23. Well, Sham, basically, when we look at other banks, you know, be it HDFC, ICICI, and all, they are all growing into the personal loan segment, which they believe is largely mainly focused on the captive customers. So, what really makes us so concerned about that uh, uh, book? Anand, I think the question on why they are growing or why we are not growing, we can only answer why we are not, uh, why we did not push that hard. For the very reason that we tightened our criteria for existing customers, we do only pre-approve digitally originated personal loans, which was growing at about 100 crores a month pre-COVID. During COVID, we tightened the criteria quite materially, so the book started running down. The back filling of the book is now running at about 60 crores a month. as we go into you know we are now getting more comfortable with the environment so we are unleashing some of the parameters back so growth will come back okay and so when we said that we are, we are looking to grow at somewhere about 15% or so i mean even at the top end about 20 or percent so how will the retail look like and how will basically corporate shape up so business like credit card personal loans will grow well. i mean credit card will grow you know well about 100% or even more uh because the base is small personal loans which is a close to about 2000 crore book will grow at about 18% to 20% this year okay and how about mortgages because that book uh, also in fact if you look at the other bank they have been growing at a much faster pace uh, just just on the previous uh, question uh, roughly 40% of the liability is mature in next one year just wanted to Exactly. Sorry, I have the question on yeah mortgage is fine. So why are yeah. that's what the uh, that forty percent is uh, natural um, um, you know incur because you remove nearly forty percent of casa the remaining one if you take sixty percent of that I mean um, say almost two third of remaining sixty percent comes to forty percent so that's the same number remains the same. Okay. Yeah. uh sham the question was on mortgage is uh, so what kind of uh, growth rate are we looking at in that segment so this year grew close to 14% we think that will grow at back to uh, last the previous year grew about 18% we think that will happen and on the corporate front corporate business i mentioned a while ago we grew this year uh, more at the back end we started growing we believe this coming financial year we should grow well into the early teens but i would be cautious about the uh, opportunity in terms of pricing so we will pick that we'll be picking a picky and choose last year we sanctioned but did not disburse 3000 crores of corporate credit uh, okay. if we had disbursed it we would have had another 3% growth but we chose not to harsh am i right harsh we had that's right we are right champ we had done that and apart from that we had done some sell down of assets Which is another two and a half percent of the corporate portfolio. Okay, which means that the portfolio mix is going to shift uh, more towards retail and I think SME. In that case, uh, we should see a margin uptick. Yeah, I mean, we said 55, 45 retail wholesale. Within retail, we will have a higher mix of ma- retail, uh, higher margin businesses. Likewise, in wholesale, the commercial banking will pick up. We also said the portfolio NIM will move up to 325 or so. so we must add that 10 basis point from 360 9 basis point increase on a whole portfolio of 130000 crores is a lot of heavy lifting to do work 
ओके थैंक्स थैंक्स शाम थैंक यू द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम द लाइन ऑफ दर्पिन शाह फ्रॉम हाई टॉन्ग सिक्योरिटीज प्लीज गो अहेड yeah thanks all the questions have been answered i think operator we should bring this to a close so if there are no other major questions uh we have few participants in the queue sir uh, if you allow me i can promote them sure please go ahead but maybe we can pause here whatever is in the queue we can close up sure the next question is from the line of jay mundra from bnk securities please go ahead yeah hi sir thanks for the opportunity um uh, on your exit roa sir so adjusting for this family pension we would have done 1.24 1.25 uh, which was we had said earlier uh, if you can uh, refresh um, this exit uh, guidance on exit basis or maybe full year basis for the next one two year we had said a 1.25 to financial years out and we are still holding to that uh, we think fy23 uh, will be closer to 1.1 to 1.12 1.13 Sorry, so the for full year basis, right? Uh, exit ROA. The full year will be about one point zero seven, one point zero eight. So five basis point more from the exit as just now. Sure. And sir, so within which uh, credit cost, if I see for this year, uh, what you have reported is forty five basis point. Uh, do you, uh, I mean, do you see any more? Uh, scope to lower it, or this should be, you know, uh, this will be uh, reasonably optimum at this point in time, 45 or so. Yeah, I don't see. I mean, we are we are working for an improvement on that, but you know, let me be honest, uh, we will add up a little in case things work in favor of us. Right. And the last two questions are on restructuring. So, how much of the, I mean, the performance looks decent, and I think you have also mentioned 95 percent collections. uh but just wanted to check um, are the entire book out of moratorium and maybe um, you know how, how many customers are paying in full etc if you can share some details our head of collections is done a phd in it so babu if you are there you can just quickly give a one minute answer to this yeah as uh, like we said our structured book is uh, primarily to say quality book as in the base of our normal asset book asset book that's why this better collection is happening and the slippage rate has also come down 40% of the book has already there coming the demand book in march and there we are doing well so looking forward also we are we are confident that we'll be able to flow somewhere on those lines only in terms of exact number of customers right now i don't have that number with me but the first 40% of the ndl book has come in the demand book in march and there we have done well and uh, the support of the quality of our book as well as collection actually So sorry, actually I could not hear much. But uh, did you say that 40% of the book has started billing, right? See, there was there yeah. was moratorium. So once that moratorium is over, yeah, you're right. Uh, you're right. 40% has started billing. That's what is the demand book. Yes. Three yeah. percent of the book has demand in it, and there it has performed quite well. Yeah. Right. Right. And the same thing, sir, for ECLGS. If you can share what is the outstanding and you know how are you seeing trends there? Yeah. That's it. Uh, there, um, there is, is the ECL book is also doing well. For us, better than that of the last quarter. ECL, EC, ECL book right now it is over three hundred. Uh, our our uh, maybe no slippage rate is far below the uh, the average slippage rate of the bank. There, quarter by quarter it is doing well. Right. So, what is the amount? Is it three thousand crore or something else? Forty three hundred. Four three, right? Forty three hundred. Yeah. Yeah. So that is actually, if I look at my numbers, it looks like it has increased from last quarter. Is that right? Uh, yeah, yeah. A little more displacements are also there from GSC. There was maybe an extended, uh, the extended uh, regulatory uh, direction was there, so something more was displaced. Uh, that, including that, it is what is the hundred point. Understood, sir. Yeah. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dawal Gala from Aditya Birla Sun Life. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, sir, for the opportunity. Uh, I think you already uh, answered partly on uh, net interest margin. Just wanted to understand a uh, bit, uh, bit of a outlook on your net interest margins for say next 12 months uh, and medium term. No, I think you heard right. We are talking of you know going up. From where we are for Q4 or our average basis, 325 FY22 by moving by five to seven basis points in FY23. 
on an average basis okay uh, and uh, just uh, you mentioned about uh, that f23 we could see monetization uh, from a lot of your fintech partnerships if you could elaborate uh, when and uh, what should we look at what line item would we see the monetization? no i think it's not a line item if the incremental cost income on this portfolio we are talking uh, you know looking at for every 1 rupee spent we should earn 1 and 1/2 rupees okay I mean, we're looking at higher, but that's the minimum what we will push for. Or it would be part of uh, both margins as well as fee. Uh, it will see if they are building deposits, it will come into the income uh, interest income portfolio. And on the credit card, it will be largely fee income. Actually, mix it to be fair, income and interest income. Sure, sir. Thank you. Can the next question. Up? is from the line of prashant kumar from sunidi securities please go ahead uh, thanks for the opportunity sir uh, just on quick uh, on uh, one data point uh, on asset quality side uh, if uh, i calcul uh, back on uh, back calculation uh, the addition uh, uh, for fy22 is roughly around 1840 crore and uh, reduction is uh, on my calculation 23 uh, 46 uh, 2346 crore and uh, write off is around 800 actually i need break up of uh, upgrade and recovery if uh, uh, if it is handy it's there in the deck itself see all our numbers are there in the deck the uh, by quarter you will find it uh, it's really point yes 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 sir uh, just up, up, uh, upgrade and uh, recovery uh, if uh, by fraction uh, if i can get it you mean the split up between upgrade and recovery yes yes how would you have it as a number again sir yeah sir this uh, 800 uh, is uh, yeah, yeah. student is 800 there was a sale of 70 the sale of kalandi a pool of uh, modern batch so no 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 he's talking uh, of he's talking of full year full year number is talking yeah, of yeah i'm telling about the yeah uh, the full year and let me check sir i'll get that maybe you can put that as a number in the deck so that everybody will have access to it you can put it in the deck in slide sir and we'll update it Uh, sir, I'm, uh, apparently, I do have a total number. Twelve fifty-eight is the upgrade and recovery, and then uh, maybe now ASC total full year is two thirty-five, and the eight hundred is the uh, maybe right off. Three to be one. Uh, sorry again, can you repeat? Only up. Twelve fifty to a twelve fifty-seven. The recovery and upgrade is full. That is that is that is more than that of the last financial year, or maybe for recent years, which is the right. Babu, they are asking about the breakup of recovery and upgrade. How much is cash recovery? How much is the upgrade? Triple six, triple six is the recovery. Five ninety one is upgrade. Yeah, now oh, the number is breakup is given. Yeah. Oh, thank you. And five nine one. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, fine. Well, I think operator, we should bring it to a close, please. Sure. Uh, I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anand Chuk for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, uh, um, everyone, for being on the call and, act- and participating quite actively. Uh, we'll connect back with you probably next quarter. Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, mm-hmm. ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Federal Bank Limited. That concludes this conference. We thank you all for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you. Bye. Bye.